Hello everyone, my name is Raven and welcome to Raven67854 Gaming and welcome to my brand new Left 4 Dead 2 tutorial series. This is a redo of the old ones from way back in I think 2009, 2010, way long time ago. Um, so by the end of this tutorial series, you'll know how to create your own campaign, put it on the Steam Workshop, and uh, I believe after I've finished all of that, I'll probably do like a couple final episodes really quick on building a survival level. Okay, so let's get started. So the first thing you need, obviously, is Left 4 Dead 2 installed. And then you need to go to Steam and Tools, and you need to install the Left 4 Dead 2 authoring tools. And then we just need to launch the Hammer World Editor, which, as you can see, is like so. And then we go to File, New, or you can hit Control in and you'll get this. You might have to, like, you know, uh, resize it because it might not be fully to scale here. Um, but you can go up to View and Auto Size Views. And this will, uh, you know, expand it so everything's nice and even like mine. Or, you know, you can adjust it to however you like. You know, whatever makes it uh, good for you. Control A is the shortcut for auto view. Um, so instead of just covering over every single little tiny detail in the hammer editor, uh, we're just going to learn everything we need gradually. So you have all of your tools over here. And obviously you have, you know, your toolbar up here, which has a lot of different things in it. And things we'll cover, you know, as the series goes on. And over here, this is where it allows us to select our textures. And we can hit browse here. I'm just going to resize this. And, uh, you know, there's an app, you know, it's source. There's an absolute monstrous amount of it. And then, then we have the viz groups, which we're not going to cover in this episode. And down here, for example, if we were to select, uh, well, we don't have it. But if we were to select the entity tool, which is over here, the light bulb, uh, this becomes active. And then we can select between entities and prefabs. and all the different stuff here all the different objects there's quite a few again we'll cover all of this uh as time goes on okay so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a room just a room nothing fancy just a really simple room for us to spawn in and walk around in and it has a really simple light okay so before we do that i want to cover one very 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 important thing that i cannot stress enough that you know when i was first learning how to do this many years ago kept running into if you're if you're gonna make a level and hammer decide on the snap grid size i don't care what it is i don't care if it's one two four eight sixteen thirty two sixty four hundred twenty eight i don't care what it is but when you're building your level out with your bsp brushes for the most part you want to make sure that you keep the snap on grid size to this consistency for consistency's sake and for your own headache keep it to whatever you want it to be so uh you could use the square brackets you know left one lowers it right one raises it and we're going to work at 16 for this whole area we're going to work at 16. now that's a little thick especially for like doors and stuff but for what we're doing it's perfectly fine when you guys go to make like your really awesome levels for the workshop and everything you guys can go full on out and just make absolutely stunningly beautiful levels. But since we're making a tutorial, we're not going to spend, you know, you know, days uh, doing this. So uh, we're going to open up. We're going to go back over here. We're going to click the browse and we're going to go down to the filter here in our little texture folder. We're going to type dev because we want the dev textures and we're going to scroll down. And these are the two we're mainly going to use. If you saw my first one many years ago, you've seen these textures. Uh, the dev uh, measure grid generic. 01 and the dev measure generic 01b the gray and the orange one i think there's others in here but these are the two we're pretty much going to build everything with i like them they look great and they're really simple okay so we're going to double click that and then we're going to go over here and we're going to select the block tool which is shift b if you would like to use the hotkey and then we're just going to drag out a room and it doesn't have to be completely square um honestly when you're when you're making your levels you know you don't really want everything to be you know exactly perfect um and in order to move around to any of these viewports uh here oh well can't do that with the tool selected but when you have the selection tool selected uh i right, use the mouse oh there we go just use the mouse wheel and it'll scroll in wherever the pointer is so i had a slight brain lapse there okay so we're going to zoom back in um and we're just, I'm just going to drag this out here and as far as moving in the 3D camera, hit Z, and then you can use WSAD, 
to move around. It's a little awkward to move around in when there's just that box. As you get more objects in there, you get better perspective. You know, I think that's big enough. Um, I'm going to make it a little wider just because, you know, it never hurts to have a little bit of extra space in the starting room. Um, clearly, for what we're doing, it's perfectly fine. Um, I'm going to use the arrow keys here to move around inside of this room. And just yeah, squish that a little bit. Okay. And then I'm just going to hit enter. And as you can see, it's made the floor here. Now we can't see anything here. Um, so go up here, go to view. And then it's currently probably a 3D wireframe by default, but select 3D shaded textured polygons. And there you go. You have a very beautiful floor. That is very orange, by the way. Um, and now we need some walls. So let's go on ahead and build our walls. Let's switch to the... Uh, to the, uh, what you call it? Sorry, the gray texture. Sorry, I had a, another brain lapse there. Um, and keep in mind, I'm still on snap grid 16. So we'll see, we want to zoom in here. And, whoops. You gotta be careful about uh, where you select because until you actually place your, uh, you know, until you actually start to, you know, until the mesh is selected, anywhere you click here, we'll just create a new one. All right, I'm just gonna drag it up here. So over here, so now we have a perfect wall here, and uh, I had it go all the way down to the bottom. Uh, another thing that we're going to cover uh, at a later date is uh, brush optimization. Like, um, you know, once you've kind of got your level, you'll eventually go back through it, and you'll, you, well, you'll see. We'll have a level where we'll actually cover that. For right now, though, we're going to try to keep it as few brushes as possible for performance reasons. Now, this is 384 tall, but keep in mind, 64 of that. It's just to the floor. So I'm actually going to just drag this up to 512. And then I'm going to hit enter, which failed. Great, of course. Why would that, why would that work? <laughs> All right, I'm just going to right click. Nope. No, it's, uh... oh, I have the selection tool. Yeah, that was genius of me. Okay. Come on, get it together, Raven. Come on. Having a very stupid moment here okay so now i can hit enter there we go there's my wall okay so now i'm just going to go through and i'm just going to do all uh all four sides and that was way too small way too small I'll try to select this other one here nope was not selectable so i'm gonna hit Z and move on over and select this and then with our selection tool here Wait, 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 wait. What? Ah. Oh. oh, that didn't. What? Okay, whatever. All right, so uh, with our selection tool, select our wall. By the way, any lash brush that you have selected, uh, it will determine... Um... There we go. Now it's like, it's like, okay. Yeah, I guess I just got really confused there. Um, so as I was saying, uh, any any brush that you, uh, there we go. Now it's working. I don't know what this thing's going. Uh, so any brush that you have previously selected, uh, when you go to, you know, draw out your new brush, depending on uh, which viewport you're in, either the top, uh, left, or side view, um, it'll automatically build the wall. So like, we'll select this. And then we'll select the brush tool and then we'll build this and you see it's already that tall and all we have to do now is drag it across and then hit enter and we're going to go on ahead and we're just gonna very quickly here okay so now we have our room which is fully enclosed we're going to select our selection tool here and the shortcut for that is shift s and we're just going to select our floor I'm going to go back to browse and we're going to switch to the generic measured the orange one. And I'm just going to drag it all the way across. And then I'm going to hit enter. And I'm going to hit Z. And I'm going to go inside of our lovely room here. I'm going to select our selection tool. I'm going to select outside of it so we don't have anything selected. So now you see we have our massive room. This room is actually utterly absurd. Like we really don't need a room this big. But 
you know what? It's fine. Um, I'm okay with this. This this is perfectly fine. So, what do we need now to get started? Well, first things first. We need our info survivor position. So over here in the uh, front viewport, as you can see, it's up here. I had to take a look real quick. I knew it told me somewhere, but. So we're gonna put our survivor position here and we're just gonna drag this down and I'm gonna put it slightly up. Um, I have run into issues in the past where when it was perfectly level, uh, it, it just did not work correctly. Now, I don't know, yeah, that's outside, see, outside. Do not want that outside. And you also get a feel for, you know, how tall this space is when you, when you look at, uh, when you look at coach here and you just see the absurdity, okay, this, we might shrink this, you know, we might actually shrink this, but you know what, it's fine. Okay, so we're gonna go back to our entity selector and we're gonna type in info underscore player start. And we're just gonna put this just right beside chef, close down as we can get it. Um, it really doesn't matter, because the player will of course fall, uh, you know, before anything becomes a problem. Okay, so now we have our player start, Good old chef. And now what do we need? Well, now we need a light. Because if we were to spawn in here right now, we would not have a light. So we're just going to get a light. And we don't really need any of this other stuff. Um, and we're going to cover some of the environment stuff we'll need. But for now, we just want a good old-fashioned light. And this is just a simple point light. And we're just going to put it... Uh, you know, let's just kind of put it slightly above. Yeah, I'm going to shrink uh, this level, I think. Uh, next, you know, not in the next video. but before the next video, because I think I made it a little too big. But that's fine. That's also not over top of them. Not even remotely. I don't know what I was thinking there. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna cover really quick is if we double, sorry, if we right click this and go to properties, I believe if you hit enter, we'll open it. No? Oh. Uh, but open up our properties panel, and then we have all sorts of stuff. We can give it a name, we can attach a script to it, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff we can do. But the one thing we want to look at is the quadratic. I'm going to set this to three. So we have a nice, uh, you know, a, basically I'm making it so that it's it goes out much brighter. Okay, and then I'm just going to hit apply. And then I'm just going to close this window. And then I'm going to go up here to file, run map. Oh, we have to save it. So let's create a new folder and let's call it YouTube tutorial. And inside of here, I'm going to call this uh, tutorial 001, and then I'm just going to save it all. Okay, and then what we have is run BSP. We just want to keep everything at default. You can check HDR if you want HDR. It can take longer to compile, but with the levels that we're building, like in this tutorial series, it's not going to take any time. And just hit OK and launch. Like I said, it's going to take longer for the source engine to load it than it did to compile it. Also, it depends on your machine. If you have a really old or just a Slow dual core, it'll take pretty well, but I have a fairly beastly uh, octa core machine, so it'll just go. And then uh, you'll get this nav errors map is unplayable. This is perfectly fine. This is how it is supposed to be. And you'll notice that some of the environment mapping's a little messed up. We'll fix that in the next episode. So this is an utterly absurd starting room. Um, I'm actually going to change this before the next video because um, yeah, th this is actually just way too big, which is fine. Um, or I might leave it, you know, you never know. You can uh, play around with a lot of stuff in here. So, you know what, maybe I'll leave it. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is the, as I said, this is the first tutorial. The next tutorial, uh, we are going to put a door and build the next little area out from it. And then we're going to populate this room uh, with ammunition and weaponry. And that that will be it. And we're also going to fix the environment issue here with the, the weaponry so stuff doesn't look weird. Okay, so thank you guys for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. And if you like this video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. If you have any issues, don't forget to you know post a comment. I'll do my best to give you a hand. Um, and also, uh, you know, if you want to support this channel, you can check out the Patreon. And it'll help me you know post more tutorials much more actively. Um, see you guys in the next one.